Thanks for doing this. Yeah, of course. Bam, we're live. Nice. What does this mean? Hello from your fellow. Greetings, uh, uh, Cornholio. Greetings, fellow 0.1 percenters. I don't know what that means. That means everyone in the chat's like just filthy rich. Us included. Yeah. Oh, look. There's your buddy, Mr. Scott Schweitzer. Oh, I love him. He is one of the kindest people I've ever met. I, I, I plagiarized. This entire podcast is plagiarized off of him. I just, oh. went, <laughs> I just went and watched all of the podcasts he's done with you. Oh, nice. Yeah, he does a good job. Hey, where, 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 where are you at? What state? You're in Texas? Yeah. So I'm originally from Philadelphia. And then I met my husband there. And he's from Texas. So we moved down here. Philly, uh, trippy place. Uh, I've never had a good experience there. Oh, no. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like you got to be from there to love it. And then people that visit don't really love it. Yeah. Ho um, um, hostile. Hostile. Well, I haven't been there in probably 10 years. And, and I've only been there like four or five times. But every, every time, uh, extremely hostile. Like, yeah, I remember when I moved to Texas, I was like, ugh, feeling like all these people are hitting on me, like holding the door. But that's just oh, now oh. being kind. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, both. Yeah. No. <laughs> both, both, both. Wow. Yeah, um, uh, I, I grew up in California, and I was always told that Texans were just like the fucking worst, uh, worst conservative fucking assholes, like racist scumbags. Uh -huh. And then – uh, as I matured and got into high school or something, I made a trip there or something. And I remember like, holy shit, these are the nicest human beings on planet earth. Yeah. Yeah. Howdy eye contact. They stand up when you walk in the room, hold doors open for my mom. I'm like, yeah. Hey, you, you know, she's a Democrat, right? Though. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here? Yeah. The South yeah. is nice. Yeah, it is. I think Houston is a pretty big kind of melting pot though. Like, oh, so that's where you are. You're really far South. Yeah. So, so many people are, pretty much like from all over I'm at my gym. I feel like everyone is from somewhere else. Right. Right. Yeah. Is Houston a hurricane country? Do you guys have any, like what's up with Houston? Does Houston uh, have any issues down there? More towards the coast, but we do get some like pretty big storms, but uh, where we live, we had that really big flood before I'd moved here that like crushed a lot of houses. But Are you below sea level? Is Houston below sea level? I don't know. Oh, not elevation though, for sure. Just flat yeah, no, it's just so humid. Um, hey, I don't like Houston for one reason. It's totally, it's just too far away. Well, Texas right? like, in general, like I'm from the Northeast, and if I drive six hours, I can go through like seven states, and then you can go from the west of Houston to the east of Houston in six hours. You're like you're only in the middle of the state. It's wild to me. Yeah, you're not you're not even flying anywhere fast. No, it's terrible. Yeah. In that in that regards, yeah. If I lived in Houston, I mean, I, even where I live in California, I feel like um, I'm not going anywhere. But if I lived in Houston, I definitely would never go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you guys are south. Uh huh. Crazy big city. Yeah. Huge. Um. Uh. Per permanent. You got married and went there. Yeah. Well, we kind of a weird story, but we met when he was at his fellowship in Philadelphia. And then what's a fellowship. Is he a priest? Uh, no, he's a surgeon. Okay. So he was, wow. Yeah. He's very smart, much smarter than me, but cuts uh, people open. Yeah. He does a hip and knee surgery. So he was doing his fellowship is basically the last year of training where he specializes in hip and knee. And we happened to meet during that time when he was at Penn and we had met and gone on like a, a date and it was great. And then he was like, well, I actually just took a job in Texas. And I was kind of like, well, it was really nice meeting you. You know, we're, I'm not going to keep going on dates with you. And then I went on dates with other people that were like horrendous dates. And he and I had still kept in touch. And he was like, why don't we still just hang out or go to dinner? And then we just kept hanging out. And then he was like, do you want to move to Texas? And like a few months later, I did. So. And I quit my teaching job. So it was kind of a wild, wild time. Does he CrossFit? Oh, no. Oh, God, that's a lot of doors open. Okay, hold on. So, so this is far. This is Philadelphia way up here. Yeah. And then, and then you met a dude. How did you meet him? Uh, on Hinge, like an online dating app. H-I-N-G-E? Yeah. 
during COVID. Uh, wow. How does that work? You're on an online dating app and th- how does that work? I've never seen an online dating app. I mean, um, I heard a lot about them. I heard, the only one I know is Tinder and Grindr. Uh, well, yeah, I wasn't on Grindr um, or Tinder, but really I didn't go on that many dates. It was just a weird time, like during COVID, like it, me and my girlfriends would go to the bar or go to a dinner or something. You're like trapped in a plexiglass box and we're like, oh, how are we ever going to meet people? Um so I just went like on a few dates and honestly, I had a great experience. I really enjoyed dating. I know people think it's like the worst thing in the world, but I'm so annoying. I'm one of those people that if I sit next to you on a flight, like I'll probably want to talk to you. Mm. Um, so I don't know. It was a cool experience. Just meet people and whether the dates went good or went bad. It was, I don't know. I learned a little bit about humans and I'm still friends with a lot of people that I did go on dates with. Um, but then, yeah, so he and I both matched on that and went to get food and just kind of hit it off. Was he freaked out by you at all? Well. Like tongue-tied? Was he tongue-tied at all? No, I think he was more, I don't know. I think just in our sport, us females, we we look like something that came from outer space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, for instance, we went to Napa this past week after semis. Oh, yeah. I felt like. I couldn't go anywhere without someone. I don't know if it's that area or what, but someone coming up and just being like, what do you work out? And first of all, like, no, this is genetics. Like, you know, fucking work out, you know? Um, But I think in his mind, he was probably just like, well, this, she looks different than most girls that I see. But Uh, uh, even, even like the first time he hugs you, it's got to feel different. (laughs) I guess I haven't really, I, I guess you have a profile. And I definitely put it out there that I look this way because I feel like if I showed up on a date. How do you say that? How do you say that? Uh, how do I say I can? Yeah, like, how do you say, how do you, <laughs> how do you, how, do, how does someone like, like, how do you, how do you let someone know you look like this? Let me tell you something. I'm, <laughs> this is Napa. This is how you walked around in Napa, right? Like this. Yeah. Yeah. People were fucking losing their mind. This yeah. is a, this is like this is probably is this the greatest photo of you ever taken? Uh, Do you like this photo? I mean, look at that background. You can't take a bad photo there. I guess. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I mean, this this is fre- How many? How long has it been? This is three days after you worked out at the sem- at the West semifinals. Uh, this was that night, that Monday. That night. night. No, no, I'm sorry. Like Monday night, we drove from. Uh, where uh, where did we end up? So we stayed in Pasadena, but I was thinking where if we were stopping in between, but we didn't. Um, Mar- and- Marco Calderon, sorry, Sevon is giddy. I, I'm just crazy giddy. I, I thought it was. I didn't know how I was going to bring this picture up, but um, <laughs> yeah, here yeah, we go. So that, we we're just already here. Okay, so so you go on a date with him and you let him know ahead of time. Hey, I'm, I, he knows somewhere on your profile. It's like I'm not normal. Yeah, you you put pictures up on your profile. Okay, so, so he I think knows. I like included one like working out so that they wouldn't be like, "Who is this Shrek that just walked into this date with me?" Yeah, it's like um, uh, you're kind. Of, I'm trying to find a horse that kind of matches. <laughs> like, have you ever seen like this? It, it would be like, hey, if someone said, "Hey, do you want to go horseback riding?" and you show up and it's fucking this thing. It's better be a Clydesdale or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, I don't know. Like, is that rideable? Like, what? Like, what? Oh, look at that thing. Yeah, you're gonna need some training to get on that thing. That thing has veins in its nose. I'm dead. My goodness. Okay, so and is he smitten right away? Can you tell? Yeah, uh, I think so. He hey, wasn't hey, hey. acting like super nervous or something. If that's what you no. mean. What about the horrendous guy? Why did that go horrendous? Oh, it's funny. My husband will say it all the time. Like he owes this guy, like our relationship. I don't know. I got picked up by this guy. He had a red Mustang and he was just like, the, like the date was just terrible. I went into the bathroom and like texted Zach, my husband during the date. I was just like, God, I'm oh. a date. but we were so friendly at that wow. time uh, that it was like normal. He knew that I was going on dates. I was open about it. And then uh, the guy dropped me off, which is also weird why I got in a car with him like a stranger. But I think he was like a mutual friend of some people that I knew. And he like tried to kiss me, but like I wasn't like going for it. And I don't know why he got the feeling that I wanted to. And he ended up like kissing me on the neck. Oh, it was just 
fucking torturous. So dating is fun unless you have one like that where you're just like, what the fuck just happened when I walk in my house? How many years ago was that? Uh, about four. And how old are you? 31. I know I'm a geezer in the sport. When, when the first time I saw you was in Albany, uh, Texas. Do you know what's really funny about that? So I did the first event, which is the triple three. It was the first event I've ever done. And I ended up taking fifth in that or six in that event, my first one. And this is how new I was to the sport. I was like, oh, they only take top five. So I don't think I'm going to be able to make the games. <laughs> I just oh, had no front, idea. Right. I had no idea what I was doing. And then that third day you had interviewed me. And I think I was sitting in seventh or eighth. And you were like, yeah, you have a chance to make the games. And again, I just like, I didn't have a coach that really knew what was going on. I, my second year of competing, I was like, do I? Like, I didn't even know the math. Um, what and I year think was that? 17? Yeah, because I, I went team 2016 and then 17, 18 went indie. Um, I want to go back just a little bit more. You're born, you're born and raised in Philly? Yeah. And um, uh, you, were you always um, into sports? Were you into fitness, sports, movement? Yeah, so I was the – I'm the youngest of four, so I have two older brothers. Um, so that just made me competitive by nature, I think. I also was like – obsessed with wwf wrestling and so mm. were they so wow. i was like the pawn in their little games that like we would be yeah that's my two brothers but we would be on the trampoline i would getting like stone cold stunnered and like i just wanted to play with them or hang with them all the time so that made me a little bit more competitive but yeah i played soccer basketball and ran track in high school and then i played college soccer and then yeah. after i kind of did the running scene of like marathons half marathons and then found crossfit tell me tell what sports did you do again you did you did um say that again you did soccer soccer basketball and i ran track in high school and then i played college soccer you didn't play soccer in high school but you played college soccer no i did oh okay okay oh, okay and um do you have a, do you have a surgery did you have a surgery on your knee you got a knee surgery no, no i've had only shoulder problems from crossfit how many years did you play collegiate soccer? All four. Wow. Wow. You I mean you're you're lucky you got out of there without some sort of fucking knee knee incident. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I found CrossFit through um we worked pen camps when we were in college just over the summer to make some money and a girl named Emma Chapman, she uh, she played at Marshall and it was the summer after she had graduated. She still worked the camps and she was doing CrossFit. She's like, "Do you want to come?" lift with me. And this was my senior year of college. And I was like, I need to get to the track. I don't really need to lift weights, you know? And anyway, I go to the gym with her and I think her workout was like three kipping pull-ups a minute for 10 minutes. And I, she has like a video of me. I can't even do one. It's pretty funny, but she ended up making semifinals in 2017, the same year that I did. Uh, we just happened to be in different regions, but it was pretty cool that we both had, you know, started so small and kind of worked our way up and when you say Penn camp you mean Penn State Penn State's a, a university uh University of Penn okay Penn University State. of Penn okay and that's different than Penn State yeah they're different yeah I don't thank you and and that was your first introduction to had you ever deadlifted up to that point had you ever you touched a barbell no not a barbell like we did we did leg press or lunges and things like that in college with our strength and conditioning coach but God, like what a disservice. I would, I think about how much better I would have been if I did a quarter of the things that I do now. Like I would love to step on a soccer field and I would just manhandle girls. No, uh, no, you know. so bench, never, never done bench press before CrossFit. No, 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 never. No pull up, no clean, no deadlift. No, we, I think we would try to do power cleans in college, but it was just so different between guys and girls. They would be power cleaning, benching setting like, you know, records for the school and us girls were like on the track doing like lunges and Brian the elliptical or something. I don't know. So stupid. Did you go through a crazy uh, body comp change as you started CrossFit? Oh yeah. I was, I think when I started CrossFit, I got down to like 135 or something like weighed 135 pounds. Cause I think I just, and, and how tall, and how tall are you? I'm five, three and a half. I claim five, four though. It's fine. Yeah. Um, Me too. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely lost weight pretty easily. I'm a nutrition coach. So it's my favorite type of client is someone who, well, everyone comes to me saying they want to lean out and get more muscular. And it's like impossible to do unless you're one type of person. And that's someone that has weight to lose, but has never lifted in their life. So oh. they'll start lifting, put on muscle, and they're just going to shed fat at the same time. And I feel like that's kind of what happened to me. Is this your, is this your, are these your homies? This is who you work yeah. for? Yeah, that's the company okay. I work for. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I, I do want to, I would, I do want to talk about this. I would, do want to talk about nutrition. I want to go back. So, so the first time you go into a CrossFit gym, you're, uh, did you say senior in high school or senior in college? So it wasn't actually a CrossFit gym. I just did one workout with this girl at the UPenn camp that we were at. But my first mm -hmm. time walking into a CrossFit gym was, uh, it's probably maybe two years after I graduated college. So it was 2016. 2015 because i went team 2016 season and somehow made the games with them and um so so you go in there and, and then do you like or well you didn't go into a crossfit gym but you were introduced to crossfit yeah and then when was the first time you actually went into a crossfit gym yeah that was two years after college okay, i went okay. into a crossfit gym yeah um and did you like it right away oh i was obsessed well the workout was like run burpees and maybe deadlifts or something. So it was something I didn't really know how to do, but I was going to be good at all three of those things because they weren't high skilled. If it was something that was like bar muscle ups the first day I walked in, I think that would have been different because I don't do well when I'm not good at something. Um, but because it was like in, you know, things that I would be good at and I was just beating people that maybe have been there. I was like, Oh, I think I could, I could do this. I think this could be pretty cool. And you and you got a new um, adaptation right away, right? So you were already in shape. You could already push hard. And then all of a sudden, probably like within weeks, you were like, oh, shit, something's happening to my body. Yeah. And I really, in the beginning, it wasn't so much for aesthetics. I was just kind of looking for an outlet because I was doing the running scene and I just felt like, I don't know, I, I can't be, I can't do this much longer. I'm getting really bored. So it was more trying to find that void that I think I had. Why do you think you like sports so much growing up? Strictly because of your brothers, or do you? It was. Uh, I don't know. I've just always been competitive. My mom even says, when I was four or something, I was playing soccer, and they didn't keep score when you're that young. And she'd be like, "You're doing great," and I would be yelling, "No, we're losing!" Like uh, at a young, I don't know. I think it was just ingrained in me. But now that I'm older, like I, if I was to think about myself more and try to diagnose myself. I think I'm just really am obsessed with just seeing what I'm capable of. Like I, after I'm done CrossFit, I'll probably do an ultra or try to do an Ironman or something just to, because I think it's really cool when you think you can't do something and you're like, fuck yeah, I can. And I don't know. I'm kind of obsessed with that. It, it, you, you've been going at it a long time. This is the first year you ever went um, individual. This is the first year you've made individual to games. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's a long road, right? You've been on? Yeah. So not that I've taken anything away from this year. I just also haven't really given myself the chance to make it as an individual. I've had really awesome teams that asked me to go team and I felt like I couldn't turn them down. Um, and I not that I didn't feel like I was fit enough then to, to make it as an individual. Um, but this year I truly like was, I've made it my goal after last games in August, I kind of let, went home, sat on the plane. I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna put my clients and cut them in half, and I'm going to give this season everything I've got, and I'm not going to have any regrets. So I just decided to go for it. I, I was watching that Ascend podcast, and is that guy Tristan your coach? Yeah. Is he still your coach? Yeah. To, to this day. How long has he been your coach? It, only since August. So when uh, I decided I, I was going to go individual, I was kind of thinking the route that I wanted to take, like, okay, kind of some big name coaches I could reach out to. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't want to be one of 20 athletes or one of mm. fucking 30, you know, and um, he works at my gym and he's, he nerds out and he's smart. He just hasn't really had the opportunity to have any like high level names. <clears throat> and he shows up every day at the gym to watch me and 
he's he's really fucking incredible sorry someone just said name tags are off you know i don't even know how to turn those on i used to know all that stuff I don't know if that. i do if i do that does that no i did no if i do that no all right fuck it who knows sorry thank you that'll be have to be something i figure out with Sousa. that just started happening as we started fucking with the sponsors and putting them down there at the bottom hey, um he's, he's at a local gym in houston yeah so when i moved to houston i only went to one gym CrossFit and Greater Heights. And I was like, CrossFit, what? Say it again. Greater Heights. Uh huh. And I was like, damn, this place is fucking awesome. They have everything. And they're kind of like an OG mentality. I don't know. Remember during that whole time when everyone started dropping their affiliate? Yeah. And it, like, everyone, I feel like CrossFit gyms got like two. I think I do remember that. Hold on. Yep. I remember. <laughs> but like, I feel like CrossFit gyms got too cool to do Friday Night Lights or. I don't know, themes and throw parties at their gym. It was like, everyone was kind of over that scene. And then I went to greater heights and they're so community based. They're, they're fucking awesome. Like they threw a party where we left for semis, like a big barbecue for the three of us that made it. It was just really awesome. Did he, um, did he have any other uh, games athletes? Uh, so his, he has a team that had made it to games. They were, something ascend how did you know you weren't out of his league i don't how did you know that you weren't too good too refined too too much experience too much like like why not go to like because i never heard of the guy yeah so how do you know how do you trust so it's your, it's your i'm seeing like oh shit you're getting down to like your last hurrah but you're also going to try to jump over your biggest uh you know uh, canyon chasm and and you go with some unknown dude at some gym in fucking Houston. Yeah, I mean, I did know him before. It wasn't like he was just some stranger. Okay. Um, but like I said, I just <clears throat> I wanted someone to be there, and I I knew that the journey individuals is can be lonely, and having a remote coach doing my tr programming on the other side of the gym by myself, I I didn't want to just celebrate also alone, like when I qualified for the games, there was a, that was like half for me, half for him. Um, and, and a big part for my husband. I know he's not like in the sport, but I don't think that's the part that a lot of people don't see is, you know, the, the people that are closest to you, the hit that they take and the toll they take having someone that's emotionally and physically just kind of drained all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I just decided if I was going to trust him, I was going to trust him a hundred percent. And yeah, he, he's been nothing. I couldn't have asked for better. I, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of shit about CrossFit athletes and, and, and analysis and thoughts. And you, he said something in that Ascend podcast I had never heard before. It was kind of crazy. He said, and I, and I was like, wow, this, I'd like to hear more on this subject. He said, so, so the, I, I made a, um, I had um, a Michelle Bassnet on the other day, and I made this joke, just basically like teams are just for fucking jackasses. Like, hey, don't teams just for people who don't want to compete at the highest level? They're scared. And it was over the top. I was, it was kind of plain, right? Just like, what's the worst thing I could say about teams? And I threw mm -hmm. masters and adaptive and kids in there too, just, just kicking some ass, you know. And uh, it, like, like teams is a place you go to hide, right? But he said about you and this is the part i never heard before that actually teams didn't allow you to show your true skills so it was the opposite for you that basically you um you have things that you're better at as an individual that can't be expressed as a team athlete and i was like holy shit, i never heard it that way that basically you're a better individual athlete like I, I've always made this assumption that if you're a good individual athlete, you'll be good team, if not a better team athlete, right? Because you don't have to go quite as hard. There's not, but this guy is saying, nah, nah, it's not like that for Kelly Baker. On this, yeah. Kelly Baker is actually going to be a better individual athlete than she is a team athlete. And I, and I was like, holy shit, I never, I've never heard anyone say that, or I've never even pondered that. Well, I, where I think he's even coming from is, I'm just pretty consistent, and with teams unless you're hit getting first through fifth in a lot of these semifinals and things like that you're not really going to podium or 
or, you know, maybe even qualify. It's like the top 10 are getting the top 10 for the most part, I would say. But for individuals, you can be top 20 and, and qualify. You just have to not have any big holes. And not that I haven't worked really hard to have, I do have holes. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I pretty even keel across the board. I'm probably not recognized a ton by sponsors or by people because I don't really have any home runs. Like, you know, Danny Spiegel or yeah, my best friend, Kelsey, like they can lift a fucking house. Now my clean is like 260. My snatch is almost, it's like 195. Like it's good enough. I'm not going to lose the snatch event. I'm not going to lose the lifting event. Uh, my runs are pretty good. Um, you know, I'm, so I'm just, I think in his mind, it's like, yeah, I can kind of chip away at workouts and, and do pretty well, but you don't like Justin Medeiros, he won the games and didn't win one event. I know. Crazy. Right. Well, it's just like, Wait, I think that's uh, kind of what he means is, um, and also the mentality of team is very much big sets, like short output, big sets, then rest. Well, that's how it used to be at least. But for me, I'm kind of remind myself of like an 800 meter runner where I'd rather just keep an 80% heart rate and I can sustain that for 25 minutes and I will do really well in that workout rather than Fran or something like that. When you saw Ariel Lowen make the games a couple of years ago, did that pop on your radar? Uh because she's mom or just because just because I, I sort of see her in your category you, you you know sort of just like hey uh, maybe not a lot of people believed in her she was a warm body at the event she did good she she stayed in the fight and then you know at the at the end of the day she didn't she wouldn't make it you know maybe to the games and um she'd been around a while and she's just kind of cruising yeah uh i mean i'm no. always rooting for like an underdog but she wasn't someone that was is there anyone is there anyone like that on your radar you're like fuck if they can do it I can do it or like inspires you or uh not really I mean I think I've always kind of put my head on the pillow and thought about I remember my first <clears throat> time at regionals hearing that fifth place spot because they were always a wild card you know I mean at that time it was top five so it was really hard to make it but it was always like one through four, you kind of knew who was going to get in. And that fifth place spot was always up for grabs. And I always thought, how fucking cool would it be to just ha hear your name in that last qualifying spot? And that's kind of been a motivator for me. But I don't know if there's anyone totally on the radar. I guess someone I I don't want to say I compare myself to, but kind of like a Paige Semenza. She, that mm -hmm. girl does not get enough credit. And she's mm -hmm. she, does, she, doesn't. she does the work. Like she'll be top 20 at the games or something. And she still just doesn't get any recognition because she's not, she doesn't have that many home run hits, but right. she's just fucking really consistent. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of maybe the people I cheer for the most. Cause I, I kind of know what that's like. Um, did you, did you have a good cry after this, uh, this semifinals West? Uh, yeah. To be I honest, picture all the athletes just going back to their room. Like if I, if it was me, I just would picture myself going back to my room and just putting my head in my pillow and just crying for like five minutes, like for no yeah. reason, just yeah. like fucking like a teapot, just steam off. Yeah. You're so anxious the whole weekend. Like whether people think the top dogs aren't even they are, you know, um, I think I was a like, as much as I was so proud and excited i i was disappointed on my outcome like obviously you were, I, you were disappointed yeah i like had written on my hand a whole the whole training season like you are top five and not I, now looking back at those workouts in the field like i'm not saying i should have been top five but i no, still no, I'm, think, I'm with you i'm with you i still think um if that last event just didn't go the way it did and if it would have went how i how confident I was in myself for that event. I think I would have been at least seven and, or if I didn't drop the bag, I would have been eight. Um, so I, oh, I just, that's right. Like, I forgot about that. You had the bag incident. Yeah. I would have just, I feel like I look like, Oh, she just and you qualified. tumbled and rolled pretty good too. Right. You tumbled and rolled pretty good. Right. Yeah. I, at least I felt like I looked athletic enough. You look crazy I, athletic. Is that, did you post that on your Instagram? Not the tumble roll. I posted the announcement. Oh, you need to. You need to. Okay, sorry. Go back. So if you would have done better at that seventh workout, yeah, you, I was you would have felt seven. better about your placement? 
Yeah, like obviously it just made for it that feeling being hearing my name announced to be so much more glorified. Like I I thought I was out. I had my the math that I was trying to do in my head and I was like, I'm fucking I I can't believe I just fucked that for me. So I was Give me a second here, Kelly. Let me paint this picture. So so it's it's the sixth event. Um, and do you remember what place you were in in the sixth event? Uh, so sixth or seventh? Sixth. Uh, after the sixth event, do you remember what place you were in? After six, I was sitting in seventh place. Okay. And, and, and then the next cushion. workout – go ahead. With a cushion. like uh, Basically, my coach was like, as long as – you don't really fuck this last one up. Like we're, really <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last words he said. No. Uh, okay. So she's sitting in seventh place. Uh, the top 10 go. The last workout is, I think um, you got to be on the assault bike and then you got to do some toes to bar and then you got to carry a heavy ass bag and you have to do that three times. Yeah. And then the third round you're coming across your, 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 I don't know, 15 yards from the finish line and the bag slips out of your hands and you're run, still running fast, and it and you hit it, and you and you tumble a good tumble. You roll fucking eight, ten, eight or ten feet away from your bag. Yeah. And you got to get, <laughs> and then you got to get up, and you grab your bag, and you carry it across the finish line, and you're in fucking thirtieth. I mean, it's just yeah. a, it's it's an error. It's not even it's it's not even um it, uh, indicative of your of what you're capable of. It's just a fucking error. I think that was the worst thing. The worst part about it was in training that was the one workout that i practiced that i was like ah, fuck like this is it this is a good one i need to just get myself in a position and then all i gotta do is just handle this last event like you're I was good so at toes to bar yeah good at toes to bar i'm the sandbag like we practiced i felt good with it the bike like i'm on the bigger end i think and i i just knew that i just needed to maintain and uh so I think I, throughout the whole weekend, I really pr prided myself on just staying true to me and not worrying so much about like this, where I was going to end up on the leaderboard. I just really wanted to trust my body until in that event, I was getting onto the sandbag and everyone was either finished or on the sandbag already. So I think I had like a little bit of a panic where in retrospect and maybe experience, I just should have taken my time, grabbed the bag and really like held on to it before getting to move but i was running that sandbag as if i was fucking hussein bolt i don't know who i thought i was um so, so when that I was the problem i'm not tell me about the problem why the one couple things tell me about the problem with how you grab the bag by the way i love that you say you were running like bolt you're a beast um were your so, so you're short so were your arms having trouble getting around the bag or you think you were running too fast mm -hmm. and, and my final question and that is when the bag fell, did you know a split second before it fell that it was going to fall? Or did you have, when it fell, you were like, what the fuck? Uh, so it wasn't that my arms weren't around it. I just, I tried to pick it up and start running at the same time. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you have mm -hmm. 60 feet, like get this bag <clears throat> off the ground. What the fuck have you been doing this workout? Yeah. Um, and so that was the first question. And then, oh, what did I know it was going to fall? I kind of yeah. like... I, the finish line was so close that I was just like, keep moving and just, just keep it with you. And then it fell. And then as it fell, I fell like on top of it. So then I was further away from the bag. And then I was just like, get up and fucking grab this thing. Did you and, like, feel it slip? Like, like in that moment, I, it was, I was running too fast. I was like, did you running? have a chance to readjust where you like, should I slow down and readjust or no, there wasn't any time for any of there that. There wasn't shit. any time. God, no, I was just awesome. Your like, balls to the wall. Yeah. But so event six was the, actually the workout that I was most nervous for. Um, that was the chipper. Yeah. And it Listen, was wait, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Listen for a couple things. Assholes. Listen, eat and beaver. Seven, stop cutting her off. Stop mansplaining. Listen, no, you're good. I have to paint the picture before people who don't know what the workouts are or like, Remind you how tall she is. I have to do that. Jan Clark, uh, have we established if her nipples are pierced? We're not talking about nipples pierced anymore. That went weird with Danielle. I'm going to try to avoid that for six. I'm on a six-month hiatus of asking <laughs> guests about their nipples. Okay, go ahead. Event six, uh, the chipper. Yeah, so obviously we got all the workouts. I thought event one would be a really good workout for me. I love gritty workouts. It wasn't. That fucking – the sled was – anyway, That I guess that's here nor there. But um, event six was the one that I was like – this can fuck you up if you just don't listen to your body. So in that event, 
I was in the top heat and I was second on the rope climbs, like on the way back down. I actually, I should have done my handstand pushups on broken. And I heard, you know, Bethany Shepard and someone else were came off the wall. And then I thought, what do you mean you heard? What do you mean you heard? Like from the announcer. So I, Oh, you're listening to on the wall right before me. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to go for the 20 unbroken. And then I heard that they came off the wall. And then I was thinking, Oh gosh, maybe I should come off the wall. So that's a little you bit. You have that thought mid, mid, mid fight. You're in the fight. And then you hear the commentator say they came off the wall and you're like, fuck, maybe yeah, Kelly so Davis should come like, off the wall. So much reflection from the weekend, but that was one thing I'm a little bit disappointed in myself of this weekend. I just felt like I played it so safe. Like Alex was on the ropes oh. and then I was second on the rope and she did a rope climb. So I waited and then I did a rope climb and then I oh, waited shit. until she did a rope climb. And it was more like, well, in that workout, I will say a lot of the workouts that I feel were very set up as traps, the, the way the programming was. So like you could overhead squat, you can row, handstand pirouette, but if you Get, I mean, we saw it with Sarah, but if you hop on that rope too early before your body's ready, like, and you foul that, it all, only thing that helps you is time. So then you just have to wait it out. So mm. I was conservative in a sense of like, all right, getting an 11th place here rather than a third, I'm still in a qualifying position. That's what I came here to do. But I didn't get to, I just feel like the whole weekend, I didn't feel like I could like be a dog in the fight and go grab what I wanted. It was more like, even the rower at the very end, I was, I think I was in third. I was rowing like a 215 because my overhead squats didn't feel that good. So I was like, you know what? I just want to, I built it up before the overhead squat. So I just played it so conservative, which obviously it worked out in the end. The goal, the only goal was to make games, <clears throat> but I just feel like I didn't really get to display like who I, who I am and kind of what, what I can perform like, which I think, I don't know, this year at games, I'm going to, just try to be that I'm going to, I have nothing to lose. So uh, um, what did, what did, what's Tristan say about that analysis? Uh, he, he said the same thing. I think he, we like he thought you were being a little, you could have been a little more uh, taken more risks. He said like, you're capable of getting a third in that workout. You could have been right. And you got that. a fifth. Uh, well, no. And I got like 11th or something like that. In that yeah. workout, I, I was talking about my heat, but in my oh, oh, okay. so I did get 11th in that workout, I believe, event six. Um, but we both knew it, it's so easy to say what it could have, should have. Like, if I did go unbroken on the handstand push ups and push the legless, if I got a no rep, that could have cost me an 11th to a 30th or worse. Mm, right. Um, so I think he was kind of like, no, we did what we needed to do, you should be really proud of yourself. And it set me up to, he, he put it in a way that made me feel a lot better after event seven. He said, event seven didn't show like who you are as an athlete. Event six showed you gave yourself enough cushion to have it all fall apart and you still make it. So I don't know that, that made me feel a little bit better. Yeah. So an eighth is definitely, po definitely possible for you. Eighth place overall. Yeah, I mean, just if you just wouldn't have dropped the bag, you'd have been in eighth instead of tenth. Yeah. And when they're calling your name, it's between you and Danny Spiegel. I, I counted myself out. I even looked at my coach. I'm like, did you do the math? And he's like, he looked like he was coding for Apple. He was like, cool. <laughs> on his pad. And he's just like, I don't know. And I really think he probably in that moment counted me out. Yeah. Um, and I, I did too. So when all, all the girls, as we were waiting, which felt like fucking two years before they were announcing, they went it to is a long wait. It is a long wait forever. And then they obviously announced, you know, third to first and then fifth to 10th and, or fourth to 10th. And when they announced Bailey had the ninth place spot and she was in 15th, I was like, this is fucking it. Right. And then, you knew how much she moved. You knew how much she yeah, moved. Yeah, I was like, if someone from 15th now took a ninth, I think, and I knew Danny had done well on that workout. And then they put me and her up on the screen. I was like, all right. I was more just like prepping myself that it wasn't me. And I was just going to remember, like, it's not just me who this was for. My family had flown out to see me and I want to still put on a face for them and my coach. And, and I just didn't want to be like, I wanted to still be proud of 
the season that I had. And I was kind of playing that in my mind. So of course the video of me getting announced looks so dramatic, like, all right, we get it. You made games, but it was more like one, I was so proud of myself for making it, but two, I was completely shocked. I really had no, I thought when they were saying like, end the 10th place, I was just waiting for, to hear Danny's name. I, I didn't think you, I thought it was a pr appropriate amount of uh, shock and, and I, and I, yeah, kudos to you. And, and it's kind of crazy that it's with such a big name in the sport. I did so your your picture, what we see at home is everyone also in the stadium can see. Like you look up and there's a screen and it's you and Danny on there, so you know it's between you two. Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, Ryan, uh, you were uh, a quarter of a second more, and she doesn't make the games. Yep. Or if Danny would have snatched, like not taking anything away from her, but I just knew like it, she, what she's capable of hitting and snatch. So it could have, should have, would have, and a lot of these things. But yeah, I'm just, I was fortunate the ball fell on my side. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Watkins, uh, Kelly doesn't have happy to be there mentality. Oh, <sighs> how, how do you interpret yeah. that? Uh, I mean, I'm so grateful to be here on the show or uh, maybe if they're talking well, about, of course you're happy to be here on the show. Uh, no, meaning, um, fuck you. I want to win. Like it's like, it's, it's just not good. Oh. You, you, you're well, I think after you want to win, like you already want to win again. Like it's never enough for you. Yeah. You know, or like, the oh, idea I'm of like just I made it. be here at the games. Yeah. No, I, I think every, all 40 of those girls that are going to show up aren't just happy to be there. I, I think, and I actually hope, uh, if you are having that, like happy to be here mentality, and that's the only reason I'm happy. I just made games and I'm just going to go have fun. Then I don't know. I think there's probably 50 girls that are behind you that are hungry to try to make a statement at games. So I don't, to get there, I don't think anyone has that mentality because it, it's all consuming of your life. And anyone that says that their life isn't consumed by it, that makes games, you don't just accidentally make games. Do, do, do you think that um, – do, do you feel any um, – I guess it's a little early to tell because you haven't gone to the game, but do you, do you sense any um, closure by by making it as an individual? Uh, like an itch that was scratched, scratch that was itched? Well, uh, I guess like, that works? I guess when you look at like the big goals that I've set for myself in life, I can check it off. So if something were to present itself and I – wanted to move in that direction. I could say, you know, I, I, I did what I wanted to do in this sport. Um, but I don't know, none of this is really about games. I, I said this on like many podcasts or things It used to be always about that. Like it used to be about, I just wanted to be so validated. It's kind of embarrassing to say, I just wanted people to recognize me and I wanted to feel like the work I'm putting in is getting recognized by certain people. And um, I don't I even in the world of social media that kind of boomed when I started this sport and just feeling like, how am I not getting recognized? Like I'm, I made games so many times where I did, you know, in the open, I did really well or something so stupid. And I'm, I'm ser seriously embarrassed by it, but I guess good lesson learned, but I don't really give a fuck. I, I, I really just genuinely care about me, like making the most out of out of my life, whether it's things I do with my family or sport or something like that, that I don't know. I kind of like the idea that not many people get to see the ins and outs of what I go through. Like, yeah, I post a lot on social media, but I don't know. I've probably had like a, almost a panic attack the week before semis. And, you know, I've cried a bunch just because I'm feeling like overwhelmed and things like that. But only certain people get to see that side of me. And I think that's so intimate and so cool that, yeah, I don't know. I think a part of me wanting to make games in the very beginning was about this weird recognition that I wanted to like live up to or have people, you know, recognize me in general. That's kind of why I, when I called you out, it was like, I don't actually give a shit. And I know that analysts are going to have their opinions of people and that's fine. I did feel like this season I deserved to people to say, you know, she has a big shot because I did really well in the open last year, but then I went team and then I did really well in open. I did really well in quarters. I won TFX. So I did all the things I felt like I needed to do. And I did just still get 
kind of written off by a lot of people. Um, but that's why I'm so glad that I've kind of been in the sport for a while. It's like no one's opinion really does matter. It's really just about, I don't know, I want to lay my head down on a pillow at night and just be like, I'm so fucking proud of you. And that I think a lot of people maybe don't do. And I don't know. I think that's like a, sh a life that I don't really want to live. So what, if it's not CrossFit after this, then maybe it's mom, maybe it's ultra marathon. It's something that I just want to be like, whatever it is I'm doing, I'm going to be really fucking great at it or I'm going to try my hardest to be great at it. And so, yeah, games is going to be fucking awesome. I can't wait to train and, and get ready for it. But I don't know. It's not the, the biggest thing in the world in terms of like what we all are capable of trying to achieve. Uh, do, do you enjoy all of it by that? I mean, yesterday, yesterday and the day before the last two days, last two or three days, I, I, I've had been very emotional. And, and for me, emotional is like I'm, I'm pretty fucking I can get really fired up, like really fired up. And um, uh, but I but even when things are bad, I kind of enjoy life. So e even when you're sitting there crying or when you're having doubts, is there a part of you that's also enjoying it too? Almost like you're getting to, you know, some people it becomes all encompassing and they have nowhere else. They can't even watch their own show. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, is there a part of you that like even enjoyed like tripping over the bag? You're like, wow, this is like my fucking life. Like, look at this fucking shit show. Everything's fucking, I'm in the middle of the stage. I've tripped over the bag. Is yeah. there a party that kind of enjoys the, gets to enjoy the ups and the downs? Like it's not all encompassing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no, I do. I actually watched it for the first time. Like uh, maybe it was two days ago. Cause I was, I was so, I, my, I have like PTSD from it. Um, but yeah, I just think we all get to write this really cool story and, I'm excited to, for my, I'm like, as much as I hate social media sometimes and videoing and photos, like, I think it's going to be a really cool little journey I get to show my kids and um, that part I'm really excited about. But yeah, the ups and downs, I mean, I would say 80% of training is, is fucking hard, man. Like it's really, this sport is really hard. I, it's emotionally hard. It's draining. It's a lot of sacrifice. I mean, I say no to a lot of things. Um, and then about 20% is really, really fucking awesome. And that makes it all worth it. But there's just, you know, if it was easy, I don't know if I would have been emotional when my name got called because, you know, at that moment, you know, all the sacrifices that you made and, and the hard work it took to get there. And so it, it's like really hard work for a really fucking awesome reward. Um, I, I think everyone can relate. You know, yesterday I went in the garage and I just said, hey, I'm going to try to do as many burpees as I can in two minutes. And it was fucking it was horrifying. The seconds watching the clock tick down and, and you know, you go out to the track and you're like, hey, I'm just going to run 400 meters as hard as I can. But but that's your like, I don't have to do that. Like once a month I get to be like, OK, here we go. And it's only I choose very simple, stupid little things like that. Right that's your day in and day out, right? Every day at some point you have to be sack it up and be like, okay, I'm going to go into the, un the I'm going to go somewhere where it's so painful that I'm, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to take myself somewhere. I just really don't want to go. Everything in your being doesn't want to go there, but you have to go there to get adaptation. Is that? Yeah. Uh, have you ever uh, read David Goggins book? No. Mm -mm. Can't hurt me. I, I would mm -hmm. like highly recommend it to anyone. He's a Navy SEAL, but. Um, his whole thing is just about that's he's pretty much changed my mentality, but I would highly recommend to anyone to listen to the audiobook because he reads it himself. But he's just a he gave you a mantra that helps you like embrace he's just, that his, kind of his, like, mindset is like how weak human beings are and how little we do to push ourselves to be better. And and so that my what I'm trying to say is I'm actually in a sport right now. Like you said, you just went yourself, you, you're not competing, you go right. into the gym. And you push yourself for two minutes to go do burpees, which is a similar workout that I could end up doing. Who knows? The games could have two minutes of burpees in the gym. But what's so cool about our sport is you can relate to what I'm feeling. We can't relate to like even what, the terror prior to it, the terror that comes with knowing that I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. All, all of that. It. So too, right. Yeah. Our, our fans. Yeah. And I hate I'm not saying like that, but the people that come watch the CrossFit games. 
right. can see a workout and just empathize or right. be like, damn, that's pretty fucking impressive. Where right. if you think about the people that watch football, we're all sitting around on the couch, eating wings, drinking beer, criticizing these guys for whatever yeah. fuck that they do that day. So their fans are just, they have no emotional tie. They have no idea what, what actually these guys have been going through to get there. Um, which I think is the coolest thing. I mean, even with sponsorships, that was like a pitch I heard recently, which I thought was really cool was, you know, if Michael Jordan's or uh, he's so out of the game, but let's say it's like LeBron is wearing an arm sleeve. Like he's only selling that arm sleeve to the, the people that maybe are playing basketball and watching him, but the majority of the people watching him aren't playing basketball. Mm. But me, if I'm wearing like, you know, tear shoes all the people watching me are also doing CrossFit. They're in and out of the gym every day. So it's crazy the marketability of CrossFitters because the fans or the people that are watching them are also doing what I'm doing. Right, I don't right. really know that many people that watch CrossFit that don't do CrossFit unless they're like my aunt and uncle that are don't really know what the fuck's going on, but they're just right. like watching, see me on screen. Um, going back to when you said you, um, you, you've, you've clicked over into this, I don't give a fuck. Let's say like, um, let's say there's um, just a, a, I don't know, a, a measuring tape. And over here, you don't give a fuck. And over here, you do give a fuck what people think. All you, it's kind of interesting. I wonder if the, if you think of it like this. As soon as you get just a little bit on the side of I don't give a fuck, it's a huge reprieve. You don't yeah. need to like, it doesn't need to be like, you don't give a fuck 100%. You just need not to give a fuck 51% to get free from the grip of trying to make other people happy all the time. Right. You just need a little bit of space, but even you started the podcast by saying that like, Hey, part of the, you do this for three people, you, you know, and, and I, I know it's not, this isn't a precise science, but your coach yourself and your husband because of their commitment to you, part of you enjoy you, you utilize that pressure, that power you give them to put pressure on you to want to make them happy. Right. And proud. Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a wicked game. Yeah, for you sure. You have to not give a fuck, but you need them. To, but you also you you want to you. It, it's kind of cool need, wanting to try to impress people and get validation. Yeah, I read I read this quote, which I thought was really really awesome. It's been kind of maybe like a mantra for the season, but there should be only two people you're trying to impress, and that's your five year old self and your ninety year old self. Oh wow! And wow. not just like. Wow. Wow. For me, it was so, uh, yeah, like that little girl that maybe didn't know what she could be capable of. But then I also want to be that 90 year old that looks back and is like, what a fucking weapon you were, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I like that. Yeah. Well, wow, it's good. Who said, do you know who said that? I don't know. I just kind of. Jesus. Heard Did it. Jesus say it? It was Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Give all the good ones to Jesus. Uh, how long does Kelly want? To, uh, sorry, Barry McCockner. Uh, how long does Kelly want to compete for a team with Kelsey uh, next year? I'm not sure. I'm going to see how this season goes. I'm not definitely not writing any team off even, but um, she tried to get me this year, but I, I had to say no to a few people. She's, she's my best friend. So uh, she's super supportive and we've gone team at Wadapalooza almost every year since 2016. So uh, Michael Scott said, <laughs> "Who is that? I don't know who Michael Michael's Scott is." Scott on the office. Oh. oh, come on. Um, uh, you don't. Um, you don't have any. Well, no, you have. You have one. Sorry, you have one. Well, I've seen one. Seen one. What, Sevan? I've seen one tattoo on you, mm -hmm. on this body. Um. Uh. What? While you drink a Michelob Ultra, I think that's a Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra. I don't know. I don't what know. what does this say? Is that your only tattoo? Right yeah. Uh, so it says "Fly Me to the Moon." It's uh -huh. my. Uh, it's like my song with my dad. He used to work night shift when I was a little girl, and um, before he would go to night shift, he would put me on his feet and dance to "Fly Me to the Moon" before every time he'd leave. So it was that little, you know, little shout out to my dad. And, and is your dad still alive? Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. He's the fucking best best human ever and, and and why no tattoos why aren't you all covered up why don't you have like some like i don't know like aren't you uh, all colored on my dad had said to me before i'd gotten mine like you don't put a bumper sticker on a bentley mm, mm, and i was like dad I'm, mm. a, I'm a honda civic like we're good um but yeah so i don't know it's just 
I have nothing against them. I think some are really rad. I think I was close to getting a few, but there was too many times where I was like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't get that tattoo like a year later. And then I just come to the idea of, yeah, I don't, I think one's enough. And that's, I don't know. It just wasn't really me, but my brother's all tatted up. So was he in the military? No, he just into it. Um, that you're you're one of the few I think that are. I feel like you're one of the few that aren't all tatted up. Uh in our semi actually, I think I don't think like Katrin's not, Alex isn't, Ariel's not. Um, maybe the okay. West Coast just. All right, good. I'm, I'm I'm glad to see you moving on. I really like that. Don't put a bumper sticker on a Bentley. I'm not that. That sounds like I was saying that about any other girls, I'll, but that's that's I'm, okay. I'm gonna say that. I'll, I'll I'll um. You can claim I'll, it. Or my, yeah. my dad said that to me. I think he was just like, don't tat yourself up. I think you look great. And I don't know. So um, I did tattoo, probably because he told me not to. Yeah, I like I like the tattoo list. I like staring at the Bentley. Um uh oh, you're a Maserati. Oh, Jonathan oh. Lane. All right. Damn, okay. appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Um, oh, look at Heidi says Ferrari. All right. Uh, what about um um what what happened? Was there an incident? that made it so you clicked over to I don't give a fuck world. I, I have two hypotheses. It was the, it was the love and support of your husband or it was, you got old. I'd say neither. Okay. Um, so 2017, when I met mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. I was, I ended up seventh that year and I was so, I was so fresh to the sport and I, it gave me this idea of like, Oh my gosh, you can make it like you can make it next year. So in 2018, I gave up everything. I I was like, you know what? My brother got engaged. I didn't go to his engagement party because I wanted to go train. I I just was so consumed by it. And my I had a, the probably the best open I ever had. I think I ended up, well, this past open was probably better, but at that time, and I think I was in the fifth seed going into regionals that year in the Northeast. And I ended up 13th, like the weekend just couldn't have went worse for me. And I had such an ugly, ugly, like outlook, ugly demeanor. I felt like I deserved to make it that I had this like, fuck everything. Like, I'm so mad. And like, in it took years, I guess, of growth. But I, looking back on that, I'm so ashamed of who that person was just feeling like I deserved anything over anyone else because I happened to give up things. So I just wanted to have this mindset that I know people say it's kind of corny, like, Oh, it's all about the journey. But I just wanted to make sure that like whatever I'm doing right now, I can be really proud of myself that day or that night. And you know, if, if it swings in my favor, like it did this week, that's awesome. And if it didn't, yeah, I would be really disappointed, but I'm also get to be really proud of all the work that I put in. So it's less about kind of like accomplishing whatever it is and more about, I don't know what I, what I can do in the everyday that I'm making myself proud of. You, you were a school teacher for seven years. Yeah. Second grade, second grade and fourth grade. It's weird how that stuck, how I remember that, you know, you, um, and, um, did you miss teaching? So this is only my second year without teaching. Oh. I, miss, I miss certain aspects of it. I quit when we had moved to Houston. So maybe it was three years. Um, I miss the kids. Like that was just really fun. I was young. Like I am younger too. So I felt like not that I had an advantage over the older teachers, but they just, they wanted to be around me and they were, they thought I was cool. And, you know, I, they, they were just awesome. And I worked in a low income district and that was, you know, really eye opening. I think a lot of people become teachers because they have supportive parents and they like to do homework and they had got new folders. Like I loved to take notes. And then I became a teacher and was like, oh shit, I'm actually on the outside. Like the majority of these kids have it really rough. Um, so then there was a part of that that was exciting that I can make a little bit of a difference in a sense. Um, the reason why the kids liked you wasn't because uh, you were younger. It's because don't forget you're one of these. Oh. <laughs> everyone wants to be why by one of those. Everybody. I still All keep in touch with some, which is so now they're in high school, like my first year ones. I wow, mean, that's a trip. Like their moms have been on fate on Instagram and have I guess kind of followed my journey, um, which is really cool to see kind of how they are. But 
like the one little girl, her name's May. She'll hop on her mom's Instagram. I think she has her own, but she probably doesn't want to be weird. And she'll be like, we watched you this weekend. It was so awesome. I think she actually said like LFG, like let's fucking go. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, second grader, you know, um, I mean, she's older now, but it is, you don't realize the impact that you get to make. I think that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, you, will you go back to teaching? No, when I left, I think I left at the right time. Like it just started getting pretty political and uh, it was during COVID too, when that whole mess was kind of going down. And I don't know, I, I, I really would like to do something in the future with kids. I always thought it would be really cool to do something with kids with autism and CrossFit uh, just because it's kind of nonverbal sport and you can do it by yourself, but it's be a way to, for them to, you know, do something where they don't have to be like on a team. And that's really hard for kids with autism. So I, something like that could be really cool or, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd like to do something with kids. I do think that we are witnessing the uh, collapse of, uh, schools as we know it. One of the interesting statistics is is uh, t two million kids, four percent of kids didn't return back to school after COVID, and there are schools closing all around, especially in California, places where people can homeschool their kids or where they have that desire. Schools are closing down everywhere because people are homeschooling uh, their kids. I, I spoke to a lady yesterday whose husband was a firefighter, and she went back to teaching for two years just to, so the family could make a little bit more money. And um, uh, I can't remember what grade she taught. Did she say seventh grade? But she said it was crazy. She said it was absolutely fucking nuts. She said she cannot believe the state of affairs of schools. Um, when I heard that they took cursive out of school, uh, at one point I heard that they put you're cursive. Old. What? That's because you're, you're old. Oh, oh, so it's okay to take cursive out? That's just like. like okay, I'm just, this would be an example. So like yeah, an no, hour a day no. of cursive for these kids to do yeah. when they're they're going to have jobs that we don't even know exist right now. So why are we like, when was the last time you wrote a letter? Right. Right. You know, like, so like, I mean, I write every day, but I don't write letters, but I write yeah, just yeah. only because I'm on this show. I just write down okay. notes because I'm old. Cause I need yeah, to fucking you could remember. Probably, you could probably do that and faster if you did it typing, right? Like you could take notes. Yeah. So they would, they would be more, prepared for the real world if we taught them how to if let's say we even took out cursive and did keyboarding which they don't need because they've been using a keyboard since they were fucking two um but the biggest thing i always would try to explain to parents that would get upset about something like why are we not teaching cursive or it's like because we're getting them ready for a job that literally is going to be all it that doesn't exist yet and them knowing cursive even if someone was like well how are they going to read the old documents like uh, the Declaration of Independence, like, I don't know, it's trans translated for them on the fucking internet. Like, what a, an hour spent that when we could be coding, which is going to be just developmentally appropriate for what they're working with. And I think it's just a hard thing for us to come around like, oh, we really are, our world is transitioning so fast, but- right the way they're growing up and the jobs that they'll have and how they're learning and things are just so different than what we did. Like when right. I, when I was in grade school, we sat in a desk that were all in lines. Uh, we had to sit up a certain way. I, I didn't go to a Catholic school either, but like even the way I held my pencil um, was a certain way. I didn't even know my parents' generation. They, if you were left-handed, they forced you to write right-handed, just crazy things. And now that I'm, when I taught, it was like, a kid has ADD. Like I don't even have a chair for him. He sits on a bouncy ball, like, but he gets his work done. And it's, if you think about real world, like for us, even if I'm sitting for too long at my desk, I'm like, I need a fucking break. So as teachers, I'm like, Oh, we've been working for like 20 minutes. Like let's kind of stand up and let's do an energizer, like put on a fun little dance, move around and then get back to work. And it, it's just a different world that, that these kids are growing up in. But I wish when we were kids that we were still treated that way. Like it's good to have the discipline, but to, to learn those skills of like, you know, you're in English class writing and you just, your brain's somewhere else or you're, you don't have nothing else to write. It's like, what do I do in the real world when that happens? Well, we get up and go do something else for a little bit, then come back to it. And those skills just aren't taught. So that was kind of cool as a teacher to be able to implement some of those things. Uh, I agree with everything you're saying. Let, let me propose this to you. Uh, 
I, I don't think that's correct about cursive, but but I, I hear everything else you're saying. Um, you can you can um eventually everything's going to be just audio, right? You're going to be like Photoshop already has this thing. It says um you can just be like, hey, um, can you take a picture of Kelly Baker and put her in the desert, and and yeah. it will just do it, right? Um, and and music. There's people just making music with synthesizers now with no formal training, right? I don't think that means that you I, – I still think that um, – I think you will erode – I think the, the human intellect will erode if you don't challenge it with foundational shit like being able to write in cursive, be able to play an instrument. I just think that there's a happy medium. I don't, I don't think that um, – but I agree with you. Kids should be learning how to code. Um, but but the truth is, regardless of what me or you are saying, what's happening in schools is none of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So w even if let's say you're right, I, I'm, I'm totally open to you being right. But none of that's happening. Kids aren't learning to code and they're not learning how to write cursive. They're being they're being um, taught all sorts of just bullshit. A and, and they're being babysat. Right. Because the kids are so poorly behaved now. Yeah. Would you say that's a fair characterization? Uh or no? Just I, I I guess you see it in some situations, and you have some situations. God, you're so much more upbeat and positive than me. Tell me, schools are great. No, I, are yeah, I mean, my experience was really awesome. I think in okay, the yeah. end, if you treat kids like they're human beings, um, they're going to respect you and want yeah. to. They're going to be intrinsically motivated to perform because they want your approval. Because all kids do. Um, but if you treat them like they're your soldiers and that what you say goes and you don't really give a shit what they think or feel. Mm -hmm. um, I also think teachers don't understand. Like I said, I think most teachers came from a really good background. They have parents that are still together. They were supported. They went to good colleges. They did well in school. And then they're thrown in and trying to understand these kids that come from a really low income family or parents that are divorced or abuse and can't relate at all but I'm going to tell you what to do. And I'm going to get mad mm -hmm. that you aren't like totally paying attention when the shit that you have going on at home is so above what any seven year old should be going through. But I'm mad that you're not totally on board that I want you to be writing for that amount of time because right. you're going somewhere else. And I say it all the time. Like there were times when I was teaching and I went through like a really bad breakup and I'm trying to teach these kids and my brain is so somewhere else. Mm. And I'm an adult. And even that was hard for me to pull together and still be there and be present. And we're expecting six year olds to do the same thing. And that's kind of the part that I think dad's well. beating mom at home and you and you're upset that the kid's not um, sitting still for 15 minutes. Yeah, like I remember the first time having to call Dyfus and like going home and just having my hands in my head. Like what's what Dyfus? Um, so who you would call if you, if someone's being harmed, like oh, a child okay. being harmed. And that's yeah. what I mean. When you build a rapport with kids, you're the one person that they trust. You spend more time with them in that year than they spend with their parents. So if you respect them and if you let them in and let them talk and be who they are, they are going to open up and share with you things that are going on. And it's by law that you have to obviously report these things. Um, and you also don't get any feedback on what's happened. So once you make the claim to Dyfus, they don't come back to me and say, now their living situation is this, or this happened to dad mm -hmm. or this happened to mm -hmm. uncle. It's just, okay, I move on with my day and act as if nothing else has changed when I see them. And that was, that was really hard. Um, uh, Jan Clark. Oh my God, this woman is awesome. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Christine Young changed the subject. Uh, no. Um, yes, maybe. Uh, spell Dyfus. <laughs> I love these people. Uh, Department of Child Services. Yeah, I think what we call uh, child protect. I think in California, we call it child protective services. CP CPS. Uh, Kelly Baker for president. Oh, that was quick. That was quick. Would you ever run for political office? No. No. Maybe that could change. Uh, hmm. All right. You don't like politics? Do you like politics? Uh, I try to stay out of the conversations. Hmm. How? Um, because they're contentious, or because you think they're pointless, or? Uh, I just think everyone's one too one-sided, and I just hmm. yeah, it's easier to. I just yeah. You're more. You're. You're. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, Chandler Smith you used to train with Chandler Smith. Uh, no, he came to visit cause we went to, a, he is fr- kind of from the Philadelphia area. We would go to like weddings together. We're really good friends. Um, you were wedding crashers together. Like it, we were just so close. He and I for a while back in the day, actually when I was supposed to go team, he was going to be on the team and then the army had called him back or something. So he was supposed to go to the Paris with us when we were competing. So we, he couldn't go. And that's how we got Christian Harris. And then we went team that following year and we had qualified in Ireland, but then uh, COVID happened. So does this look like, feel like forever ago? It's four uh, years. Yeah, ago. yeah. He's, he's so, he's the kindest human being. I love Chandler. Do you, are you, did you say you're going to have kids? You think you're going to have kids? You're married now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want to have kids. You met this guy and then got married. Met him on yeah. Hinge. Yep. And then so there's hope out there, single ladies. <laughs> um, do you um do you ever go back and curate your Instagram? Do you go back and erase stuff? Like uh no, like if I like an ex and I broke up, I've I've deleted pictures, but not. I don't. I don't even know what it would. No. No. It's kind just, of a fun little timeline, like. You can go back sometimes and see, and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> I, 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 because as I went back there, I saw boyfriends of yours, previous boyfriends, right? I don't know. I, I, oh, they, okay. that I would delete them, but that's okay if they were. Okay, but should, now that I said it, will you go back there and delete them? No. No. It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm hiding anything. You know, no, like no, no. I, I, I know. I was just, th- yeah. I always just trip on it because it is. It's kind of like your uh, Instagram is kind of like your family album, right? Or your own personal yeah. people magazine that the whole world gets to see. Yeah. And so then I was thinking, oh, she's married, but then there's boyfriend. I mean, that's from years and years ago. But like, I dug in there. Like, I was scrolling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't really have any like. Oh, and actually, I don't even know for sure if they're your boyfriends. I couldn't tell for sure. Yeah. I mean, all my breakups haven't been like super toxic or anything like that. I had two really long-term relationships. One was seven years and one was three and a half years before I met Zach. Yeah. So, um, I don't have any like ill will against them. Seven years. That's a healthy relationship. Yeah. It was college. We dated all college and then a little bit after you believe in like the seven year itch, like seven years. And then like, Oh shit. Like that's like the Um, first one for couples. Yeah. I think I, if I would have met him maybe when I was 30, it would have been like different. Maybe it would have worked out, but I, we were both growing up and figuring out who we were. And I, you know, I'm so grateful for the times that I was single in my life because, you know, I, I kind of got to discover who I was. I dated someone for so long when I was young that it was always like a we and never a me. I didn't really even know who I was. Um, so I think it was, yeah, it was probably the best thing that happened to me. Um, tell me about your first marathon. Why did why did you do that? And when was that? Uh, I just it was just always on my bucket list. I I always said like one day, one day, and then, like I said, I started listening to David Goggins, and just his mentality is so like, why the fuck does people keep, do people keep saying like one day I'll do something? So I just was like, oh. I googled a closest marathon and signed up for it and and went for it. And did, and um, were you healthy afterwards? Did, did that injure you? That I, trained, mile ride? I did like a full on training for it. I felt, I mean, obviously like it's really, really hard. The last three miles, my body took a toll, but um, no, I, yeah, I was, I was okay. The and one that really fucked me up was David Goggins has this challenge. It's called four by four by 48. So the challenge is you run four miles every four hours for 48 hours and I was like, well, I don't really have 48 hours. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do two miles every hour for 24 hours. So it would be the 48 miles, but just in 24 hours. And I like my Achilles, I could feel on that last mile. Like you could almost feel that stretching out. I couldn't walk for like two days. It really fucked me up. So, and that I didn't train for. So lesson learned that any, anything over, I think a marathon you really need to train for. Um, g- g- tell me about that a little bit more. So you read about what year was that that you did that? Mm, yeah, it was two years ago. I did it like at, at home. 
in, in Houston? Uh, no, in Philadelphia. And in, in, on a runner? Uh, some of it I did outside, but it was during winter time and at night in Philadelphia, like probably not the smartest thing. So I did that on a treadmill for like in, some of the hours. In your house? Uh, well, it was in an apartment building that had a gym. So I would just go down to the gym, run the two miles and come back up. Well, then did anyone do it with you? No. Okay, I'm trying to get my head wrapped around this. So you hear about it in this book. And then, so then like, you're like, okay, I'm going to, um, how long did you, did you do a week prep or two weeks prep? Or are you just like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do this? No, I was more like tomorrow I'm going to do I had to find a time that would, because I was like, oh, do I want to start at like 6 a.m. and then end at 6 a.m.? Or do I want to start at 11 at night? And and so it was more just trying to figure out like a time that it would I could recover. So I just decided to do it on a Saturday morning. I started at like 4 a.m. And the first like. You started. Okay. Started at 4 a.m. Okay. Okay. 4 a.m. Then would end at 4 a.m. The next night. So yeah. the, the worst part was like the nighttime just trying or to end it, it ends at 2 a.m. Right. It, no, it ends at. No, it ends at 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah. But that last hour, it yeah. took me 55 minutes to do two miles. Dude. So I was I was walking like I, I I almost quit. And my husband, he wasn't my husband at the time, was like, you can't, you have to finish this. Like, so I just ended up walking. How did really. he was he staying in the apartment at the time? Yeah, he slept on the couch. Like when I would come in and he would just kind of like talk to me throughout the night a little bit. But then I, would, the staying awake was really hard because I was so, my body was so exhausted. I should have almost started at nighttime and then worked the first couple of hours through the night. That maybe would have been easier than after running about 36 hour, 36 miles in the last couple of hours or through the night. Who do you think you got that from your mom or your dad? Probably my dad. My dad played college soccer. He's kind of. But I don't know. I think I'm just – I don't really think I'm either – like either one of my parents. I'm not really sure. So so if if I, if I a lot of people will want to do something and then scratch the idea or or uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like like someone might have an idea of like getting a tattoo and then not do it or so, – and, and that's kind of easy to do because all you have to do is go in there and plop down your credit card and be like draw that on me. But what you're saying – that you did is you got your head wrapped around this idea very quickly. Did you have it? You got your head wrapped around this idea very quickly to run two miles every hour for 24 hours. And you, you just executed on it. You, do you see that, that like, you're not normal. You, you see well, that? <laughs> like, did you have any doubts Were you like, Hey, this is a bad idea or that's going to ruin my sleep for the next two days. Like do you start coming up with excuses like for not to do it. Yeah. But like I said, I just think I, I do have to be good in our sport too. I think you have to have some loose fucking screws upstairs, but I, I don't know. I just like this idea of like someone else did it before or, or no one else has done it. Like, I'm right. Gonna, yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool. Do you know anyone who's ever done that? What you just did, what you said you just did. I'm sure. Sh I'm sure. I mean, people do ultra marathons. I know, but do you know anyone? Have you ever like her? I'm sure probably someone's done it somewhere too, but do you know anyone or heard of anyone who's done it? Uh, I've never heard of anyone doing that, but I wouldn't, I bet my life that someone's done it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of people have done the four by four by 48. So that would be one mile an hour. If you did it that way for 48 hours, but a lot of people will do like the four miles early, like within that four hour span, if that makes sense. Um, so they'll sleep a little bit. So I just tried to make it the goal to not sleep. Cause I felt like if I closed my eyes, I probably would have a really hard time waking up to get back and run crazy. Did anyone see you doing that in the apartment, um, uh, treadmill downstairs, like during the, while you're doing it? Uh, no, because most of them were that were in the gym would be like only in there for an hour, but there were only two treadmills down there. So I felt this pressure of like, fuck, what if someone is there? And that happened once. So I had to go outside and like run in the cold for the two miles. Oh shit! You had a two, and you had a two-mile uh, plot. Uh, yeah, yeah, like around the area. Yeah. Uh, and it was snow on the ground. No, it was just like nighttime and cold. The northeast gets pretty cold. In oh the, yeah, yeah, I bet. God, it's 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 um, it's all it's all ideas that I could 
think that I would think of to do. Like when I when I heard you talking about this on uh, Schweitzer's podcast, I was like, God, I, I would like to do that. But then I quickly just pushed it away. Yeah, you should. You should. No. Like, you know what I, I, what, what about, what about, uh, um, uh, two miles on the hour for 12 hours? So that's really cool. One of my clients actually did that. So oh, after I you did him, it, you inspired your client to do that. I told him I was going to be doing it because he, it was during COVID. He was going through a divorce and kind of really struggling with things that were going on in life. And he, I was like, well, let's try to find some real fucking weird goals that are going to make you feel fulfilled. And I told him that I was going to be doing this. And he did that. He did the 12 hours. So half of it. And then he ended up doing, uh, he looked up how many steps it was for Mount Everest and then did that many box step ups. Uh, wow. So he, he's really, really cool. Um, how many is it? Do you know that number off the top of your head? I don't, I've done, uh, we, he also did with me the amount of steps that you do for the world trade center. I don't remember how many that was as well, but we did it with a rock on our back, which is nowhere near the amount of weight that the firefighters had done. But um, uh, I just typed up uh, how many uh, box step ups to Everest. Um, hmm, I wonder. I wonder if they're like easy. To get obviously, not there. comparable with like oxygen and things like that. But yeah, I right, mean, it, right. I think it's just cool that you know some people can buy into the the process of if you're feeling a little bit lost, you can just go do some shit that amazes you the the in in the current record for vertical height ascended by stair climbing is 18,585 meters what is that that's um fuck that that times three would be how many feet i don't know yeah that's nine is, what is, it? is that nine mile fuck that's so that's fucking crazy yeah, that's and that's in 24 crazy. hours that's in 24 hours that's crazy yeah, what does that end up being? 36 plus 18 is 46 plus 8 is uh, 54. And then divide that by 3. That's like that's 17 miles. It can't be right. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah, yeah I get maybe because you're not climbing just straight up. Yeah. I think he probably just looked like how many feet or how many steps it Oh, oh, this, yeah. how many steps and he did that many box step ups like in the idea of stepping i probably it. shouldn't show you this website i found look at this website has all the mountains broken down so like mount kenya oh. stairs oh, to the wow. top eleven thousand eight hundred and eighty five. Oh, yeah. uh or, or even from sea level they give you oh shit yeah that's this is bad for you shouldn't see this site yeah at least not during games training I mean, who knows? Maybe it will be a games, uh, games event. Um, turntable, uh, 29,000 feet divided by two feet per step. I, I, I guess that's if you just went straight up too, right? Like if you were just climbing up, just like straight up to it with no. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, when you, when you go to the games this year, will be, it will Trist Tristan will go, I assume. Yeah. And, and your husband will go. Yeah. A bunch of my family will be there too. So it'd be awesome. And um, do you have any, uh, would you have goals for that? Uh, it's probably the same. I just don't want to have any regrets. Um, I thought Make this it was to the cool. end, survive. Yeah, Justin Sua, do you know who he is? He's like a the name mental, sounds familiar. mental training coach. I, I think a lot of CrossFitters follow him. Um, he works for the Boston Red Sox, I okay. believe, as their like mental training coach. So he and I had hopped on a call. We've known each other for a few years now, but he gave me a couple of things to do that kind of relieve anxiety. I've struggled with it probably my whole life. But um, one thing was to write a letter to yourself on. So I, it was on Wednesday. I did it before the semis, write a letter to yourself that you'll read on Tuesday and just what you'd be really proud of what that girl did. Um, and it doesn't, it's not outcome based. It's only just like, your mindset, how you treated people, what you, you know, what you soaked in and things like that. And that really, really helped me. And I'll probably have that same mindset going into games of just the things that'll make me proud. I, and I can't control a lot is I don't really have a goal. I'd like to do my best, but just to give it my all and soak in the moment and be present. And um, yeah, so it's not like I have an, I don't really have an outcome. I just, I want to be able to actually give it my all and not be so concerned about blowing up 
because I really don't have anything to lose now. So, um, w w could you share any of that letter? Like some of the thoughts in it? Like what, what is it? Is it like, um, dear, uh, dear Kelly, I'm so proud of you. And that, and that helped a lot, huh? That letter. Did yeah. you think about it during the event? During the weekend? I don't know where I, my journal is. I, th I was journaling outside yesterday. So it what's your out. husband's name? Zach. Zach. Zach's locked in the bathroom with your journal right now. <laughs> um, it's not like it played in my mind, but it was writing it out like beforehand is almost preparing my mind to, to do those things. Like another, another prompt that he had me do is do an if then prompt. So like, think of all the things that could go wrong. So if I drop the sandbag, then, and then come up with your solution. So the idea is I'm going to already prepare myself for all the things that can mm. go wrong. I love and that. then I'm going to come up with the solution so that if it come, if it happens, I've already, I'm already one step ahead in figuring out what my move's going to be. Cause I already came up with it before it happened. So um, yeah, he, he's, I, I think things like that can make a huge difference. Do you have a pet? I have two dogs. Do you hear them? I just hear, yeah, I heard some do a dog, a dog purring. Someone's ready to go out. I, no, the one, one is 14 years old. She's a golden retriever and she just sleeps all day near me. Um, so she's just breathing heavily. And then the other one's a three year old golden. So what's Zach do to stay in shape if he's not doing CrossFit? He goes to like lifetime fitness, does more like bodybuilding things. He's not much of a cardio fan, so I'll have him do some workouts. We kind of started a garage gym, so he'll do some things with me. He's giant, right? Uh, I wouldn't say giant. He's six one. Okay, yeah, that for to me that's giant. So, so he he's not a big fan of the burpee. Yeah, I think he respects and appreciates all that we do in CrossFit, but he's just like I, I like don't want to feel that way type of thing. Right. Right. Uh, look at Greg Glassman thinks lifetime fitness is good. Well, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Uh, it, crazy. Um, a giant for sure, Sevon. Yeah, a, a giant <laughs> for Sevon for sure. Yeah, totally six one. Carry me around. Uh, it, it's it's interesting to me. Do you like working out with him? No. No. I just like. I don't have fun when I'm not just taking it seriously. Like mm. we we did a workout on. Saturday, I'll say we didn't start back up to training truly on Monday, but I was like losing my mind. So we did like a 30 minute AMRAP of running bike, kettlebell swings and push ups or something like that. And that I enjoy because I don't feel any pressure. We're kind of giggling, like talking a little bit through it. But if it's serious training and he's trying to talk to me and I'm in the middle of something I'm like, mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of nice that I have my own thing and he has his own thing. Yeah. I've dated someone before that was, he was on my CrossFit games team and that's real. It's really hard to, to date someone that's in the sport with you, um, especially on team. I think. Do you, do you, when you were on those, on the teams, do you think that you took um, CrossFit more seriously or winning more seriously than a lot of your teammates? Hmm. No, I think. Is there a hierarchy? Does everyone know that person takes it the most serious? That person takes it the least serious? I think so. It's more like what's going on in everyone's personal life. Like yeah. I, like if you just took, for example, last year, I was, had no real obligations. I could train when and if I wanted. And like one of the guys on our teams was going through the fire Academy. So he had limited time was also going through that, which was really hard. The other girl on my team had, just had a baby that August, which she's such a fucking stud. Like the fact that we made games that year and she could rip like 20 ring muscle ups after having a baby in August is incredible. But, Crazy, yeah. um, but again, same idea. Like she has to feed her baby that there's times, nap times and things. So I just happened to have like the most flexibility I would say, which allowed me to train the most, um, which, yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I, yeah. I, I want to apologize for, strictly objectifying you and staring yeah, at your yeah. body and not thinking you were going to make it to the games, but it, I, you started the show strong and let me off the hook. You went to Napa and the whole fucking city was obsessed with you. So. <laughs> uh, I just think our 
the females in our sport probably get that. If I go to the gas station, I get that. It doesn't have to be in Napa, but yeah, it, it well, it's um, it's the Clydesdale phenomenon. Everywhere you go, you're going to be the paragon of the expression of what a woman should be. And so I, I, I remember in two, I remember in 2000, I remember the first time I saw you thinking, Oh, I can't talk to her <laughs> because the first thing that was going to come out of my mouth was like, you look fucking amazing, but you can't really say you're not supposed to say that to people. That's so I kind of avoided you the whole weekend, but, 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 but everyone there looks amazing, but you kind of recalibrate there. Right. You're like, fuck every chick here is just like fucking expressing just like, well, I was, even, I was even saying that like, it's funny what people will come up to me and say something, you know, at Napa or a grocery store or something. But then, you know, you feel so at home when you're at a competition. But even there, I feel like I am the person at Napa. Like I look at Alex Kazan, I'm like, yeah, she's, yeah, she's joked, you know, or, you know, right. whoever it may be. Um, and I, you know, kind of puts everything in perspective. But a skyscraper, yeah. a 50 story skyscraper is so impressive. But it, the but the Empire State Building is surrounded by them, and you don't look at any of them. You only look at the Empire State Building, and so that's kind of what the this this CrossFit woman is wherever she goes. She's the Empire State Building, and it's like fuck, it's just yeah. It does make me laugh that people will come up and say something like, "What do you bench?" or you know, some some random like inappropriate thing like your body. But you'll never go up to someone that's severely overweight and be like how much do you eat a day? What the you know? fuck happened to you? Yeah. And so it is kind of like, I don't know. Do you do that? They, hey, you could do that. No, I mean, I would ne no, I'm more so saying like, we're so quick to like say something about a girl's body it, to them, which can be like at times, especially coming from certain people. so inappropriate. Um, you Give know, me an example. Give me an example. Give me an example. Like being like, uh, this is like two weeks ago. I was at the grocery store, maybe three weeks ago. And like some guy followed me out of the gym, out of the grocery store as I'm unloading my bags to ask like what protein I take. Like, was I ever overweight? All these questions just about my body, which I get that they're coming from a place of curiosity. Yeah, those are pretty, I'm, I'm okay with some of those. Like, yeah, no. And so just, and, but and it's he also sounds like he like, wants to get in shape. It sounds like I didn't get vibes. He was hitting on you. No, no. And a lot of them aren't like I have many women that will come up to me like I like one woman was with her babies, like young little kids and had a little baby. And she's like, hi, I don't mean to offend you at all. But I just want to say, like, good on you for showing us what we are capable of, like something oh. like that. And I'm like, yeah. fuck, yeah, that's the shit I love. And that makes me feel really proud. But um, yeah, not that it's just. You know, we, I, I don't know. I just think there's like a time and place for someone to come up and just start asking you things about your body that you know, same idea. It's like, maybe they c come from a complimentary standpoint or something like the guy following me, but like also how inappropriate is that for like a guy to come follow me out of the supermarket? Yeah. yeah. That part's weird. Right. Just like a little unsettling. Yeah. Um, my, my, my wife, the other day, I, 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 the spirit of the story is going to be correct. I don't know what the details are, but my wife, the, we get stopped a lot. For, people want to talk about our kids all the fucking time. It's like taking out three great Danes. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a trip and they are, they are special kids. But my wife, the other day was loading the three kids into the van and um, uh, these three ladies were staring and she could tell that they were talking. And so my wife turns to them and goes, they're not triplets. Cause that's often a thing that people think that they're triplets. And the ladies walk over and they go, we weren't staring at your kids. We were staring at your body and we thought oh. we all wanted your body. Okay, and it, it's just, yeah. it's just like that for CrossFit girls. Like it, it's just going to be, yeah. A dude following a girl out to her car is a little weird. Um, but I like his questions. It wasn't like he was like, Hey, I bet I could bounce a quarter off that ass. It was like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. You, was, was the guy fat by any chance? Uh, a normal looking guy yeah. i want to say like in shape but not also not like obese or something like that as a nutrition expert how many clients nutrition clients do you have uh well i cut back on my clients for the season but right now i have 62 and the, and wow that's a lot of relationships holy shit it's really incredible it's such a fulfilling job like talk about changing someone's life i can't have that many relationships i can't that's fucking nuts that's intense yeah it, yeah, it is. It's intense, but you're also getting to like teach them something that I wish. Talk about going back to schools. I wish that we taught kids like I just remember being in high school wanting to be I was a little overweight. I wanted to look like a Victoria's Secret model so badly. I would write on my hand like 
this probably me sounds too. like me too. I, me too. <laughs> it sounds like probably like I had an eating disorder, which I probably did, and I think most women at some point in their life did. But I would have and boys. Would, me too. Me too. Yeah, I'm getting boys. on this panel. And right I would write D N E on my hands, like before school would start in high school. That said, like, do not eat. Oh, to try to like. Yeah, I'm not sure and like I would that. be so yeah. proud if I like, like even the background of my phone would be a picture of like a Victoria's Secret model, which is weird. Like now, but I, I just wish someone would have said to me like, Hey, actually what you can do to be really healthy is, is this, like I would eat a bagel at lunch and that would be it for the day and be like, I did really good today. Like I only yeah. eat one, but when like, yeah, so I just, it's, I wish there was just more information out for especially younger kids did you but. write it on your hand in cursive very great question. <laughs> that's hilarious Ke kelly i would um i would just like i would panic that i was fat in high school and then just like before i go to bed try to do like a thousand sit-ups like a fucking oh. idiot you know what oh, i mean just yeah. just weird shit isn't that so sad like thinking about what we did and how much i remember being on my senior the sad school. part is you, what you said that we didn't have anyone like fuck teaching us like so much like why didn't you take us out and give us a nutrition course and keep us moving all day why wasn't there a class that was four hours long where you walked the whole time and you stopped every 20 minutes and the teacher told you um hey everyone we're gonna pass around a bag of broccoli and everyone's gonna tell me what you think about the, like yeah. or everyone's gonna do a create write three sentences on what they think about broccoli yeah. and read it out loud i mean you know what i mean like just something that's fucking like beneficial stimulating the sad part is is that no one was like actually helping us pursue what we wanted yeah, like we all wanted the same thing. We all wanted to feel yeah. good in our skin and things like, but we just didn't know how to get there. And we also were growing up in that time of fad diets, like Weight Watchers. I remember like doing Weight Watchers when I was a freshman in high school. My mom was doing it. I was like, well, maybe I'll do it. And I just felt like I had such a fucked up relationship with food from such a young age. How about the idea of even a diet is just retarded? It's insane. As opposed to just like, like lifestyle. Hey, what are you going to do yeah, to sustain yeah. the best performance? Yeah, which I'm so happy that when I have kids, I just one, I think they'll hate me because I, all I eat is the same shit. But um, just to teach them like, no, this is healthy and you can still have ice cream if you want. But I just yeah, it was it was hard. Definitely growing up and trying to you, be someone I couldn't have ever been if I really even wanted to. You may chastise me for this. I want to show you something really quick that I posted just just before coming on. Um, the podcast I wrote, this is a picture I took of a kid at, at the skate park. Okay. And he's eat, he's got Tootsie Rolls, Sunkissed, bag of chips and a Dr. Pepper. And I sat there while the other kids, while he, he, while he ate all this shit. And I put child eating bag of chips, Sunkissed, Dr. Pepper, Tootsie Roll, feeding your child poison. It's okay to feed your child a little bit of poison. I don't agree with that at all. Like, I like, I'm so like, like I see people giving their kid a birthday cake at one or at two. And I'm like. Yeah, that's more for the parents, but. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's so, really so tell, tell me, tell me about how I'm, I'm totally open to being wrong, but I like, I'm like your kids too. taste. Why are you introducing those things to his taste buds? He can eat all that shit when he's 18 and older. Like, why are you even, uh, why? I just don't think it should be something. Oh, I didn't even show you the picture. Sorry. I, what, no, I, what the fuck am I doing? Did I even – I didn't share a screen share. Jesus. Selfish asshole. There it is. Sorry. Well, I'm glad you didn't include his face. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think if we can teach kids not to have the all or nothing mindset. Like Halloween is such a good example. Like I think we as adults pass down the mindset that we have. Like, well, you better eat it all now because – you know, after today, we're getting rid of it all. So then kids over consume, they glorify this candy. And then mom and dad get rid of it. And then they're like, Oh, we can't get the thing that we really want anymore. Because we could only eat it on this one day. And if we really just taught them like, hey, this is something that you're going to enjoy, it's really high in sugar. Let's start setting boundaries with it, though. And we'll keep it in one place. I want you to pick, you know, 10 of your favorite, you can have that for this week. But we're also going to we're also going to have our other foods that we know are going to make us feel really good when you can teach that to them and have them buy in, not have them think this is bad and I can only eat it today and I'm going to consume as much as I can because I can no longer have it tomorrow because mm -hmm. mom and dad are going to get rid of it. It's like that is just creating such a unhealthy 
relationship with those things. So, I mean, the, the one-year-old smashing a cake, I'm okay with. I think that's just a fun memory for parents to have. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think just teaching them like what health is, is going to just be really important. So it's going to be fun to see your kids will be your experiment. Yeah, for sure. Hope I don't fuck that one up, but yeah. Uh, Savon won't be allowed at the skate park soon. <laughs> uh, 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 Savon's not the guy you want to talk about this. He'll never agree. This. No, no, but I like hearing it. I trust her. She's, I trust her. I like her opinion. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think there's any excuse to give a child uh, a cake, but, I, but I'm, I'm open to – I mean, she, we, I'll tell you where we do agree. She said it's just for the parents. It is just for the parents. Everything and, before a kid is like two, a lot of it's just – yeah. For us to feel the, the big birthday party that the kid will never know about. It's yeah, def, keeping up with the Joneses and it's more about the parents. So um, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I wasn't sure uh with your post I, you you were a good sport. I wasn't sure if I was gonna um I was gonna get thrown under the misogyny bus or objectifying women bus. I was I wasn't sure where we were going, but you were a good sport. No, yeah, no, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. All right. You're welcome. Anytime. Uh, we will be watching. I want you to know that I am a, a fan and um, that one time listening to the show isn't the only time I've talked about you. And uh, I think that the listeners to this podcast really appreciate you and like you too. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see you in Madison, I guess. Yeah. All right. And we're, we're rooting for you And this group. Uh, I think this group appreciates uh, who you are and what you've done more than the place you take and don't get me wrong everyone wants to see you you know smash everyone but uh remember like all of us like just think you're cool as shit cool yeah i appreciate you guys i really do all right all right have a good bye. all right bye uh kelly's cool good show all right um I what someone said something. Oh, oh, here we go. Uh, he will not be there. Savon never leaves his cave. You know, I I should, probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I am I am planning to leave my cave and go somewhere with with the crew, with uh, California hormones and Paper Street Coffee and and the crew and the crew. Easy interview, good show. I was a little nervous at first. I I wasn't I wasn't sure. Yeah, very down to earth. And that and that kind of settled me down a little bit too because I saw uh, Scott. I watched Scott interviewer um, uh, from Clydesdale Media, and he was she. That was so good. She was so easy. Yeah, she's cool as shit. Her Instagram's crazy. Her Instagram is crazy. It, but I honestly, I can't believe like she's not like in like that uh, million follower group. It's um, I think you just go to Kelly Baker. You guys want to see her Instagram? It's fucking oh, it's Kelly Baker nine two eight. There are some just crazy pictures. That picture of her in Napa is crazy. Maybe she doesn't know. I I don't think she quite understands her presence. She has pretty. It's it's intense. Her presence is intense. I, I remember it from 2000. Yeah, Barry McCockner, she's the perfect package. I, I hate to agree with you because it's so objectifying, but yeah, she, it's pretty nuts, everything. Uh, I love Kelly. Yeah, she's great, right? If you you can't follow a woman out to her car, I guess no matter what, unless like she dropped her fucking wallet. <laughs> uh. Oh, yes. Nate. Oh, yeah. Now we get to the objectifying. There was a little bit of objectifying. Uh, so, Kelly was cool. Stephon, please recognize that women are not encouraged to have it. Please now recognize that women are not encouraged to have a... I don't even know what the fuck you mean by that. Women are not encouraged to have a muscular body. Uh, give me that. Is it write that again. I don't, I don't understand that. Um... Uh, Rosie photography. She's real as fuck. I would like to, I would like to hear that letter she wrote to herself. No, you can ask a woman for protein powder. You just can't ask her at her car after she, you know what I mean? Like just, it's just a social, um, uh, here, Heidi, 
I don't follow me to my car unless you want to get arm drag. Yeah. Look at Heidi. God, you're cool, Heidi, with the jiu-jitsu arm drag. Jethro Cardona, see you ding-dongs later. He can disagree and still be a professional kick-ass interviewer. Oh, well, thank you. There is, uh, there is no show tonight. There is no show tonight. Travis B. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, I heard that I can get uh, drugged to the ground if I uh, and, and mounted if I follow you up to your car. Oh, oh, shit. There is a show. Sorry, Matt Souza. There is a show with JR and Taylor tonight. Sorry, sorry. Oh, shut up and scribble. Fuck, you're right. Sorry, you're right. Hey, listen, that show, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to get those guys to do that show on the regular every, like, Wednesday at 5 p.m. I'm basically begging them. So uh, ho uh, tell them, hey, when you if you guys are around watching the show tonight, say that in the comments. We need a regular show from you guys at a regular time. And I want it to not just be just about um, the uh, – I don't, I don't want it to be just about programming. I, I was talking to JR and Taylor yesterday. I want it to be a show where they're like – they just do like a 10-minute show or a 30-minute show on like describing what tall man workouts are, right, or what short man workouts are, or um, uh, Fikowski's 20 best uh, workouts, or um, just anything in, in the space – what are three things you should know before you open an affiliate? Just all that shit, you know? Um, oh, here we go. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, here we, this, the, thank you, uh, Difficult. Uh, you went on a rant that women aren't discouraged to have muscular bodies. Aren't discouraged to have muscular bodies. Yeah, I don't, I don't think – I've never – I don't think women are discouraged. I, 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 I don't agree with you. I don't think it's even – I don't think it's – um duality like that i don't think they are discouraged or aren't discouraged but uh, but i'm also hey dude i'm also 100 percent aware that i live in a totally different world now that i'm in crossfit because i rem i distinctly remember seeing girls who did crossfit at first and thinking holy shit they're really buff i wonder if that's like i don't know if, i'm not sure what, how i think about that and now it's like nothing to me now it's like the more buff the better kind of i don't that's a, a gross exaggeration but i don't um i don't really care i'm at all it's not a um uh my wife knows jujitsu too her favorite move is called concealed carry Mr. Souza. Uh, I think this is a question. Oh, yeah. You can get a con uh, concealed carry in California. I think you can. I think you can. Uh, it's difficult more. Um, it's more that people aren't encouraged to be healthy in general. Oh, I thought that was around the carry. All right. Oh, here we go. Sleeky. It's uncommon to be fit this day and age, and so when you are fit, people think you're an anomaly. Yeah. Maybe difficult. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I, I maybe you're right. I don't know. I, I guess you, you. I guess part of me like just doesn't. Maybe I'm being uh, disingenuous with you, or, or or feigning naiveness. I guess maybe it's I just don't care. Like I I think it's so stupid to not incur not be supportive of of any kind of working out or any expression of someone's body after they have lived a healthy lifestyle that i just don't give a shit so but maybe that's it all right um thanks for the chat i love reading the chat with you guys sometimes often i try to stay focused somewhat during the show include the funny comments it is fun when people bring up stuff like the nipple piercings and I can like blame it on you guys, like work it into the show, but blame you guys for it. I like that. I love you too, uh, Mr. Vindicate. Are we doing a, um, we're doing a special shirt for the games. Uh, I was on a text thread this morning with uh, Tommy G and Matt Souza. We'll be getting Tommy G back on. Fuck dude. 
his YouTube account. I think the first time we interviewed him had 164,000, then 400,000. And I think now he's approaching 700,000 fucking stoked on him. And, uh, I, I was bugging, um, Tyson Bajant this morning. I want to find out where he's at. Cause that team, right. When he last, we checked, there were 90 people on the team and that shit has to get cut down to uh 53 heavyweight slap fight champion slap fight champion there's a um there's another guy we 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 have on the hook he's the heavyweight slap fight champion what's his name no it's not tim silva maybe it's not the champion god what's that guy's name so here's how it goes here here's Here's what's crazy. I'll tell you guys this process on how I get people onto the show. I find them in their social media, right, on their Instagram. Then I DM them and I say, hey, uh, would you like to come on the show? I'd love to have you on the podcast. And then they simply like, yeah, let's hook it up. And then um, I'll say to them, cool, can, here's my phone number. Can we text so that I can loop in Matt Souza? And when I do that, I lose about 20% of the people. That, and by the way, that's not um, that's not because they're like fuck Matt Souza. That's because I just I think I put in one. Love you, Sebi. Thank you, Rose. You're always so sweet. Um, that's that's because I put in one too many steps. You know, like when you're gonna buy something and then it's like one too many steps, so you don't. I think it's just because I put in one too many steps. No, 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 no. That that came out wrong. Souza is not the problem. It's that. I don't think that it, it, then they're just kind of like, fuck you. I ain't texting you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with 12 Daily Doses. Susan makes your show better, way better, to 100%. Yeah, they probably think I'm scamming them or something. Yeah, go straight for the kill. You think that is go straight for the kill shot? Just like, hey, I'd love to have you on the podcast. I mean, yeah, it's like. Oh, group chat on social. Okay. You know, I never do that. That's interesting. Okay. Dude, Justin, I'm glad I talked about this. So you think when I initially contact them, I should do a group chat with Sousa on there and be like, hey, I have a we have a podcast. We'd love to have you on it. <laughs> we have a podcast. I'd love to uh um uh, get you on it and then and then engage from there. Okay. It gets weird. Uh, Matt Susan, it gets weird when we ask for their credit card info. Yeah, that part's weird. Uh, okay. Yeah, the taking it offline part. Yeah, that, that throws them. Well, uh, uh, Elisa says, don't ask them for their phone number. I, use, I give them my number. So that they at least know that like I'm that vulnerable, right? I take my pants off and then I'm like, can you guys take your pants off? All right. Oh, shit. Uh, Adam Blakesley, uh, FaceTime people from the Instagram. I think we've tried that a couple times, right? Okay. Uh, so scribble, shut up and scribble tonight. I think that's at 5 p.m. Oh, uh, Sousa, something's wrong. I couldn't put her Instagram on the screen. Sponsor overlay? Add over, what is that? Oh, oh, I should have had that on too. Look at that. Oh, that says Master of Coaching. We don't, they're not a sponsor, are they? That should be, yeah, this thing needs to be all cleaned up. There were no overlays on the show. There were no people's Instagram accounts. The whole thing was fucked up here. Let me go through all the shows. I probably shouldn't do this while I'm live on the air. Oh, none of these even work. How about this? 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 Oh, there we go. Is that what it is? Anyway, I don't know what I'm doing, but these shows... We f I fucked up today. I need help. I need all sorts of help. Comments, banners. Yeah, the branding. The branding. Um. The branding's all messed up. 
Hey, did you see uh I'll leave you guys with this. Did you see this? I can't tell if this is satire or not. This is the uh morning chalk ups Instagram account. Oh, Hey, before I talk about this Reebok kicks off Pride Month, I can't tell if that's real or not, but I, I one time, um, I worked at a home for a mentally disabled adults for five years, basically lived there with them. Not basically, I did. And I took this, uh, I, t I would take the kids to the Special Olympics, right? The adults, I call them kids, but they were adults. And I would take them to the Special Olympics. And one year, one of the guys I took to the Special Olympics, he was. We were approached by someone, and it was for it was when AT and T. Uh, there was a there was a company that merged with AT and T, and it was called like Pac Bell or something or Pacific Bell. It was like where we all had our cell phones in the beginning before AT and T. They were like the big cell phone company, and they walked up to us at this event and they said, "Hey, we would like to uh, have this guy be in our commercial. We're going to do like a Special Olympics commercial." Uh, you know, I said, "Okay." So they got the phone number and I signed him up and he was going to, he was in the commercial and in the commercial, there were like 20 d uh, mentally disabled adults, but only like three of them were really mentally disabled. The other 17 were just like regular people, like, like 12 daily doses, but they just pretended to be retarded. And I thought that was interesting, right? They just needed a cut sprinkle in a couple tards. Um, this kid, this kid had fetal alcohol syndrome. Mom was drinking during pregnancy. But then, uh, but then the other seventeen were just regular people who just like just play retarded. Okay, uh, morning chaga. Reebok kicks off Pride Month with line of genderless clothing. I cannot tell if this is a joke. What a trip. From a fit and design standpoint, Reebok took a totally different approach. I'm I'm pretty sure a skirt is um not. I'm pretty sure skirts are for women, like generally speaking. Oh look, I got oh Souza, look at this. I put what I put what ethnicity is that guy? Looks like he might check three or four DEI boxes simultaneously. Look at I got 86 likes on that. Holy shit! Uh, this guy wrote crawl up Glassman's. Hole from which you were birthed. <laughs> um, uh, where is the hatred in the Sevon Rinsta comment? Uh, Sevon Rinsta is so true. Oh, I like this. is fucking crazy. What is this guy? Why is this guy so angry? Let me, let's click on his. Wait, let's click on his really quick. Uh, no, no apologies. Holy shit, this guy's fucking like Jason Kalipa's fucking disabled brother. Is this him? Allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm Noah. I'm a lucky duck with a full and vibrant life, a beautiful fiance, great friends, and my dream job. I run a cool gym called Luminous Fitness Collective in Austin, Texas. I stopped using social media completely about two years ago and have only recently come back to check on people and watch funny videos. <sighs> Wow. Doesn't that look like Jason Kalipa that like fucking got hit with the fucking tard stick? Crazy. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, he loves fucking George Floyd. Wow. It, listen to this. This is a George Floyd po post. For those of you who don't know who George Floyd is, uh, he's a, Porn actor, uh, um, gunman, um, thief, robber, hoodlum, drug addict. I, I think that's fair. And he was uh, killed in the line of duty. In the academy, we were conditioned to think of ourselves as sheepdogs, the strong few who protected the docile many. Too often the veil slips away and we see the sheepdogs for the wolves they are our country, but especially black Americans deserve more, so much more. Oh, and he hates black people. Holy shit. Wow. But pretending to like them. That's awesome. Okay, so this guy got 
some mental health issues. Fair enough. He got he got wrecked by social media and now he's back fierce. All right. So he's upset because I what did I say? I said something about uh Okay, back, back here, back here. Then back to my dude, Susa 84. Holy shit. Uh um, let me see. Uh oh, he was a cop? Maybe. I know it sounded kind of like it, right? Sounded like it. He's a cop who hated black people and now he's overcompensating. It's fucking amazing. Uh, so many uh, George Floyd posts never any with any quotes. I wonder what those look like. Suck my dick, bitch. Uh, uh, get, oh, did he have a he, him too? Um, uh, uh, get on your knees and put this gun in your mouth. Uh, I can't breathe. That's awesome. Well, I would love to, uh, I, I am going to call, crawl back, uh, tonight for dinner. I probably am going to crawl back into the glassman hole. Last night I went over there and we had fucking just so much meat and asparagus. My pee smelled crazy this morning. I ate so much asparagus last night. Uh, Oh my, uh, oh, uh, oh my God, what a shame to have one of the biggest podcasters able to write that hatred vision of who is able or not to be represented in the media today. This is so wrong to let that slide. What, how, what, what, what is the, what ethnicity is that guy? Looks like he might check three or four. How is that? Uh, sh well, I appreciate being one of the biggest podcasters, but how is that hatred? Someone, let me see what's going on here. How is that hatred? Uh, Sevan has always been scum. This is nothing new. Let me see this. Let me see this. Uh, Benjamin Allen. He likes to work out. Let's see. What are you guys? Just thinking about and trying to process what happened yesterday at the Atlanta forest. It's the official story is that one of the forest defenders fired on the police and was shot. Personally, I don't buy it. I had met the person in question. Um, I don't know what he's talking about. They've provided no evidence, no body. Uh, social justice warrior, though. Go. Likes guns. Oh, look, the history of the Armenian genocide. Wow. Recent events in Armenia have spurred me to finally get to the book that's been waiting on my shelf for a long time. This is far from the first genocide I've studied in an organized manner, but one thing is particularly sticks out about the lead up to the full Im implementation of the extermination by the Ottoman government. Greater and greater levels of repression and violence were committed against Armenians. Crazy. Hey, dude, uh, whatever your name is, you know that that exact same playbook that's, is, that um, was used on the Armenians is being used now, and you're buying it. Isn't that ironic that you're interested in genocide and how people are killed and, and exterminated, and yet it's being used now. But you think I'm scum for pointing it out? That's uh, that's bizarre. Okay, back to back to back to Reebok. Here we go. Where, where's where's this? Post? I'm so proud of this. Eight, oh, 91 likes. Holy shit! It's getting it's getting more. A climb into the hole where I was birthed, last man. I, I don't even know what this is. I don't know why. I don't know why that that's not even a hatred comment. Uh, Sevan has always been scum. I don't know if I've always been scum. Uh, he's like the wish version of Dice Clay or 90 Stern, but with a better Fran time. Uh, Sevan doesn't matter if he's not in a CEO shirt. We don't want it. Oh, I don't know what that means either. Uh, Sevan did not say who should or should not be represented. Also, he is the biggest podcaster. Uh, the yeah, those. 
Um, yeah, that's the that's what you get for talking to people who are trapped in their head. They're always going to run with it somewhere else. Can you point out the hatred he commented? I ha I want to hate what he said here, but I'm having trouble finding it. Please let me. I know. I want to hate what I wrote too. And what do you think he implied by that comment? I didn't imply anything. I just fucking said it. There's no implication in what I'm saying. None. None. <laughs> And what do you think? It, what is the connection with the post in the first place other than mocking the will and representation made by Reebok? I think it's clear. Dude, we live in an era where everything is about fucking race and ethnicity and what people are wearing and clothes and whose genitalia they want in their face. And everyone talks about it, but in this roundabout way. And so I'm just saying, what what ethnicity is he? It looks like it checks a few boxes. Because he kind of got, is this the black dude or is this a white dude? He's got a tattoo. Not a good spot for a tattoo, in my opinion, by the way. They don't do thigh tattoos. I think they, they do something to the uh, visual proportions of the body that make the body somehow look off. Um. It's a total. It's a totally uh, fair question in this era. If I'm mocking anything, I'm mocking the fact that you you're mocking it by getting offended that it came from me. It's it's so bizarre. I'm I'm not I'm not. Impl what do you think I'm implying? Tell me what you think. I'm trying to figure out what you think I'm implying. I don't know what you think I'm implying. Uh, okay, here's the thing. If I'm implying anything, it's the fact that it's that my question is ridiculous. That's it. If I'm implying anything like it, like it, like it, like maybe it shouldn't, it, like it doesn't matter. Uh, so you're not going to answer the question. That burden is on you for saying what you said. Yeah, none of the woke people ever can answer those questions because when they do, it reveals to them their hatred. It's awesome. Um, they hated him because he, t uh, so they hated him because he told the truth. Uh, you're always trying to silence people. Yeah, exactly. Crawl back up Glassman's hole from where you were birthed. Where is the hatred? So true. Yeah, it's pretty. I thought it was a great comment. Uh, when is Noble coming out with their uh, no gender collection? I think they have their whole, everything they have is no gender. Everything they have is, they've, they've, they've arrived. They're fully enlightened. Uh, Gabrielle Castle. This is th uh, a friendly reminder to the people leaving hateful comments. Your friends in the LGBTQ community and those who are currently questioning or exploring their gender can see your comments. What takes you just two seconds to type is the kind of hate that will stay with them for years, forever marking you as an unsafe person to share information about who they are with. There's no value... Add to your hate. Do not feel like these clothes are in line with your personal style? Question mark. Do not purchase them. But that does not mean that something isn't thrilled. But that doesn't mean that someone isn't thrilled by this release. To draw an apt, though simplistic comparison, I happen to feel pretty meh about bell bottoms. But that doesn't mean I take to the comments to spoo hate every time a brand I love releases a pair. Every time someone I follow doms them. Very well written. Awesome. But but right, it, it's like there's presuppositions in it, and she's missing the point why people are like no one cares. She no one cares about those clothes. That's not what people are saying. No no one no one cares if like no one cares that that guy dresses like that. No one cares if men wear dresses. No one cares that that's the the thing is is that it's everywhere and that it's just completely taken over everything and that it's being shoved down everyone's throats. And there's presuppositions that you're making about a reality that's not a reality, like this word gender. That people are tired of, but but I do like what she wrote. It was it was very ni nice. It was very, yeah. There's no reason to just spew hate. I I, I agree. Even though I spew some hate, I, I fucking agree with her. I agree with her. And alien and alienating people is is. I don't know. That's interesting. All right. Um, yeah, it's unisex, not revolutionary, really, Reebok.
Yeah, I know that part. It's uh that's the mental ill part. Exploring their gender. Sean Lenderman, I, I have a thigh tattoo. Okay, sorry, yours is okay. All right. Um I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Uh, Greg Glassman on tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I had a blast with you guys today. Uh, uh, Kelly Baker. I was going to call her Kathy Baker. K uh, Kelly Baker, thank you for coming on. I'm going to go uh, wash some of these hateful comments off of me. Thank you, Jessica. Bye-bye.